Sri Lanka is in serious trouble. Country is officially bankrupt. An economic crisis in Sri Lanka. Most serious economic and political crisis. The worst economic crisis in decades. The country's gone bankrupt with no money, fuel, medicine or food. And the people of Sri Lanka are fed up. Actually more than that, they're furious and things quickly turn violent. This place is truly blessed by nature, but also cursed by some appalling politics. At the centre of all this is Sri Lanka's controversial, ousted president and alleged war criminal, Gautabaya Rajapaksa. He's part of the Rajapaksa political family, which has more or less ruled the island since 2005. Many saw him as a war hero, while critics accused him of war crimes. The Rajapaksa family is blamed for dividing the island and the mismanagement of the country's economy. This is how just one family broke and divided Sri Lanka. So, the two most prominent Rajapaksas are brothers Mahinda and Gautabaya. The Rajapaksas were born to a well-known political and wealthy Sinhalese family in Sri Lanka. Their father even, D.A. Rajapaksa, was an MP and a founding member of the Sri Lankan Freedom Party. Gautabaya, the younger of the two, joined the Sri Lankan military in the 1970s, becoming a high-ranking military officer, while Mahinda was pushed into politics following the death of his father and became the youngest serving MP in Sri Lanka at just 24. In 2005, Mahinda decided to run for presidency and won by a very narrow margin. With him in charge, he quickly appointed Gautabaya as defence secretary, with day-to-day -day control of the country's security forces. This shaped the country's future, as the two of them set about ending the civil war that had been enraging the island for the last few decades. For some context on this, the roots of the conflict go back to the period of British colonisation. When the island of Ceylon became independent in 1948, the majority Sinhalese took power. Soon after, Ceylon became the Republic of Sri Lanka, and Buddhism and Singhala were installed as the state's official religion and language, replacing English in favour of the majority. Sinhalese, we decided upon as the official language because 70% of the people of Ceylon are Sinhalese. This move led to leaving the minority Tamils, Christians and Muslims on the island marginalised and fearing discrimination. Tensions between ethnic groups actually ended up mounting and the Tamils were targeted by Sinhalese in island-wide riots and pogroms, which left hundreds dead. The underrepresented Tamils then began to organise themselves, first by protest before taking up arms. From this, the Tamil Tigers, a guerrilla force was formed. They demanded for an independent state, Tamililam, which led to conflict from 1983. The conflict spanned over 20 years before Mahinda took on office and was held together by a fragile peace process and ceasefire. So when standing for election, Mahinda was against the idea of a separate state for the Tamils, which gained him the support of the Sinhalese nationalists of the country. So when they first came into power, they came into power as a kind of a strong, strong man figure that was able to kind of end these talks and just finish the war and go for a more military all-out solution. And a military all-out solution is exactly what they did, as when the Rajapaksas figured a way to end the war in 2009, they were brutal. In their all-out offence to finish the Tamil Tigers, the Sri Lankan army deliberately and systematically bombed innocent Tamil civilians who were made to shelter in dedicated no-fire zones which the government themselves had set up. They banned all foreign journalists from going to the, the front lines of the conflict and even worse, they actually told the UN that for their own safety, they would have to leave the areas of the conflict and they kind of gave them no option other than to leave or be at risk of facing bombardment. Estimates say 70 to 100,000 Tamil civilians were killed in the last months of the conflict, a genocide against the Tamil people. International scrutiny on their tactics and allegations of war crimes piled up. However, the Rajapaksas were in complete denial and called the successors of this so-called humanitarian operation. There were allegations the army shelled them and even shelled field no. hospitals. No, they didn't. I inquired into it. They didn't do it. If somebody had done something wrong, I'm going to take action against them. 
There must be evidence. But there is evidence, and plenty of it. These satellite pictures show the before and after of a shelling by the Sri Lankan army ordered by the government. Calls for an independent investigation for war crimes were brought forward. But again, the Rajapaksas wouldn't budge. If you are so sure of your case, why not accept the demand for an why? independent I'm, I'm internationally we are a, investigation? We are an independent country. We have the ability to have investigate all these things. So the you're at, even punished. now, despite the demands of the UN Secretary General, you are not prepared to accept any international scrutiny of the Sri Lankan security forces' behaviour in the no, last There is no weeks necessity for that. The end of the war caused further division between the ethnic groups in Sri Lanka and the Tamil areas in the north and east remain one of the most militarised areas in the world. Activist journalists who spoke up on the matter were quickly silenced in notorious white van abductions across the country. And despite all of this, they've been more or less in power ever since. After the brutal ending of the war, the economy would boom and foreign investors flocked to the island. The New York Times named Sri Lanka as the number one travel destination of the year in 2010, despite its human rights record. The Rajapaksas were branded as war heroes by the Singhala South, rubbing shoulders with Sri Lanka's influential Buddhist monks and celebrities. Mahinda even had a music video praising his work on national television. seemingly get away with anything. So what they did was promote much of their own family into politics, even bending the rules or changing the constitution if they had to. Allegedly at one point more than 40 members of the Rajapaksa family were appointed into government, unheard of in any democracy. Allegations of corruption, money laundering, fraud piled up over the years. The youngest brother Basil was made finance minister and was nicknamed Mr. 10% from allegedly taking millions in commission from government contracts. Mahinda's sons, Namal and Yosita, have both been accused of laundering millions of dollars through various businesses. Namal was made cabinet secretary and a member of parliament, and Yosita was the chief of staff for the prime minister. Gorda was charged with corruption and deprived the state of more than 75 million. They were arrested, but the charges were quickly dropped and were later released on bail. Unsurprising if your family are the ones who run the show. And despite all these allegations, their unwavering popularity just kept winning them election after election. Mahinda was president for 10 years and prime minister a handful of times. And after a brief stint in which the Rajapaksas weren't in power, Gorta became president in 2019 in a landslide victory. The Rajapaksas had Sri Lanka all to themselves. Well, that is until now, right when Sri Lanka is on its knees. But to get to that, we need to discuss their spending habits. The Rajapaksas borrowed a lot of money, particularly from China, $7 billion in fact, for infrastructure projects. Projects which just made no economical sense. So like they, they invested in, in a port in Hamadwata and they also invested in, in, in an airport in Hamadwata, which is actually the hometown of the Rajapaksas. But now the airport is seen as one of the most empty airports in the world. And with that lack of foresight, the project struggled, making it impossible for Colombo to repay its debts. The Humbertoto port was formally handed over to China on a 99-year lease. And other projects such as the ambitious Colombo port city have stalled. And the thing is, while suffering such heavy economic losses, the Rajapaksas failed to cut back on military spending, even after the war had ended. At the end of the war, Sri Lanka was spending about 10% of the annual, the annual budget on military. Now, a normal country which has ended an armed conflict, they normally reduce their military budget expenditure to like 2%. The Tamil areas in the north and east particularly saw an ever-growing military presence, with reports of some areas seeing one military officer for every two civilians. Yes, the economy did take a major hit with the 2019 Easter attacks, and again with the COVID pandemic. For an island which relies heavily on tourism, people not visiting the country is going to have its consequences. But the mismanagement by the government year on year on the country's wealth is what led to this economic crisis. You see, one of Gordabaya's election promises was to cut back on taxes when elected. When this came around, the country lost 25% of its revenue. Another disastrous move by Gorda was to ban the import of farming fertilizers. 
It's a radical move, as no country can feasibly run their food supply on 100% organic fertilizers on a whim. Farmers overnight stopped producing, and the food supply collapsed. The country then had to import rice and other essentials, and the price of food exploded. Which takes us back to this. Protests turned violent and much of the cabinet, including many members of the Rajapaksa family, resigned from their government posts. Gorda initially defiantly stayed on as president before his presidential house got raided by protesters. He fled the country only to try to cling on to power abroad until he finally resigned. A new president, Ranil Wickremesinghe, has been appointed, but much of the crimes by the Rajapaksas will take years, if not decades, to undo. It doesn't help that the new president's policies are not much different from the Rajapaksas, and he's had a close relationship with the family for decades. Despite the Rajapaksas being removed, Sri Lanka's outlook remains troubled, especially with this new government. And who's not to say that a return of the family that helped create this mess is not off the tables? Thanks for watching. So I'm looking to post more explainer videos on a more regular basis on South Asian news, history and culture on this channel. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please do like and subscribe. Thanks.